Hey everybody! Quick wardrobe change, matching water bottle. My name's Adam Rabinovitz, I'm a travel and wildlife photographer. Part two of the behind the scenes. This is the editing video, it can be a little bit technical if you're not really into the photography side. This is your opportunity to skip through to the next video. We'll be back in the vlog, back in Gonrejo, exploring the park, and first of the monkey wars. So I think the first thing that I actually want to say is that when I say post-production, it's never about altering what really happened. It's not about adding extra elements or, or let's just say it like this, but being true to what I saw. I don't feel that a digital camera is the perfect tool. People think it is. People say the camera never lies, but in actual fact, cameras see the world very differently to the way people do. Let me put it like this. If you're reading a book, you don't see the entire page in 100% detail, completely sharp. It's almost to the point where you only see the word that you focus on and maybe one or two words on either side. Now, if you imagine taking a photograph, photograph of that same situation, you begin to understand how differently the camera sees the world to the way we experience it camera's going to record that page in 100% detail. That's not the way we see and experience the world. So the post-production for me is about getting, sort of replicating my experience when I was there. It's not about making massive edits, it's about getting the color true to how I experienced it because I don't feel like the raw image is what I saw and what I felt when I was there. So it should be dive in. That's the philosophy. Stay true to what you saw, improve on it or enhance on it because the digital camera isn't a perfect device. Okay, so what I have in front of me now is the Rundi Crossing image in Lightroom. So if you see a before and after picture, you really see how powerful Lightroom can be. So if you guys aren't using Lightroom, please consider it because if you're not working in RAW, you're not getting the most out of your images. You're not really access the same amount of data in that file. You're not working at the same levels of the highlights. You can't work with the shadows in the same way. So highly, highly recommend it. So let me run through some of the changes I made in Lightroom. You can show before and after. So like I said before, it's about enhancing. Um, exposure stays the same. I made it a little bit warmer. So added some yellow and magenta. Added contrast because it really lends itself to the image. I brought the blacks way down because um, the image was looking quite flat and slightly overexposed. So I didn't need to up the highlights, I just need to bring the blacks down to add that punch to it. So you don't need to add too much contrast because what contrast is doing is raising the highlights and lowering the shadows, lowering the blacks. But in this case, I didn't need to raise the highlights, I just needed to bring the blacks down. So here I bring the blacks, black down all the way, minus 65. I still add contrast, plus 27, um, and I bring a bit of life and color into it, so five vibrance, five color saturation. As well as contrast, so I upped the clarity a lot, I'm 61, and maybe this is a good time to just show a quick before and after of all the settings. And then the last thing I did was bring the noise down a little bit. It was very late in the evening, uh, I was working with a high ISO and that's another reason why you should be using Lightroom because that noise reduction software is really fantastic. Cool, so now I'm going to export Rundi Crossing from Lightroom across into Photoshop. So what's cool about Lab Color, it's a different color mode. So you know you get RGB, red, green, blue, CYMK, yeah, CMYK, that's like how you see color when you print it. So the one RGB is like color seen as light, so that's from the film that is from Darkroom. Now if I go to lab color, one of the annoying things with lab color though is you have to flatten the image. So here, now I'm starting with the file that I had from Lightroom and I exported across, right? Going, changing the mode from RGB to lab color. Okay, now I'm gonna copy that background layer so you can see the adjustments that I've made. You go to the top, image, um, apply image. Um, and then in this window in blending mode, I normally change that to overlay. And then by changing the opacity, you can see how much of that filter or that effect is being applied to, to the image. So you get four different settings that you can apply. The first one is lab. 
Um, let me do a preview so you can see lab. You see how much punch you get with that lab setting. So what it does is it adds punch and it raises, it makes the highlights warmer as well. See that? The other setting is lightness. Now, <laughs> you, see, you see what that did to the image here. So this is very extreme where the shadows are going blue and the highlights are going warm. I don't use this often and when you do, you bring the opacity all the way down to maybe 4%, 5%, but it can be really effective in an image, okay? Um, and this is actually an exercise that I do when I use Lightroom, is you're not sure which channel you're gonna be working in because every image is different. So in channel A, channel A and channel B is where you where you're working a lot. So this is A and that's B. In B, the shadows are going a bit cooler. So in both of them, it's giving warmth to the image, but in, in the B channel, it's bringing the blues into play a lot more. Okay, so the shadows are going a lot bluer. I like that for this image. It's not often that I do this, but I think I'm gonna go 100%. Okay. And then what happens is you don't just go into lab color once, so you can apply image more than once. So now I'm going back to image, I'm going to apply image again, and I'm going to do another round of editing, right? Um, there's B, that's A. So A is like a general overall warmth, and if you've got green in the image, it ups the greens quite nicely too. Lightness, let's see if I bring the lightness opacity maybe down to five. So you see what it's doing there? It's just bringing a, um, a coolness into the shadows. So that's before and after. And I might bring it down a bit more, three. Okay. And then I'm gonna to go to apply image again because I wanna have more contrast in the image. And in lab, you're getting that contrast. So let's up it to 11 and see. You see that it's just giving a bit more punch at the same time adds warmth to the picture. Let's make it 22. See, it's really coming to life now. Okay, so look at this. This is the, after editing in lab color, and that's before. And it's amazing how relative color can be, where when I was working in Lightroom, it looked like a decent image. But looking at the before picture compared to here's the after, it's, it's amazing how much life has been brought into the, into the image through lab color, okay? And what's really cool about lab color, very quick, very easy edit, which adds a lot of punch. So it's very fast and very effective. Cool, so that's that in lab color. I'm not gonna open up my final edit that I did and show you the adjustment layers I put in after I'd worked in lab color. So if you're gonna do those adjustment masks, you can't do a lot of those things in lab color. So you then have to go to image mode and put it back into RGB color. You see when it does that, it asks you to flatten or not. Um, I'm gonna say don't flatten. So now that you've seen the value you get from lab color, I'm gonna now bring in my final edit. Cool, so what I've done now is I've collapsed all those adjustments into one layer so you can have a quick preview into what I did. Um, So, see this is amazing, this is what I'm saying how relative color is. Um, so this is the image we got out of Lightroom, right? Now, um, this is the adjustment we did in Lab, which is a massive improvement on the first one. It has so much more life into it. And when you think you've finished there, these are all the adjustment masks that I put onto it afterwards. And now you're really seeing the real potential 
of the image, okay? If you guys don't know my Instagram, um, we'll put it over here, at Ravenography. And then I've got a second one where I post to, so like a color theme, that's at Color Curator. So that's the end of the video. I hope you found it useful. I think lab color can be a very powerful, effective tool. It's quick and adds a lot of punch to your image. Yeah, this is the first in a series of videos where I'm gonna be doing these behind the scenes, like a insight into the way that I work, the way that I edit, my workflow and everything. If you enjoyed this, you found it helpful, like and comment below. There are gonna be plenty more of these. Let's call it like a masterclass, if I can call it that. So subscribe to see more videos like this. Bye.